Hello everyone, how you doing guys? We are live and we today we have a juicy juicy and the people we have waiting and we have our guests on the green room waiting for you. We have a special guest to do. We're going to be talking about MBTI and I don't need to be honest because I work on the um, deception field. Uh, the truth to be told, uh, 20 minutes ago I was taking a nap. We has been going live every night doing webinars, trainings. We have been doing uh, um, collaboration with other people. So we are like, oh God, crazy. So I took a nap and my team start calling me like, are you alive? Are you, are you awake? Are you awake? Yeah, yeah, I'm awake. Don't worry guys, I am here. So, we're going to be talking about MBTI. People is going crazy with MBTI and is one of the things that people is been waiting. And Facebook, again, is giving us a hard time. We are having trouble streaming on Facebook. This may be an issue with Facebook. Facebook, uh, seriously, I think I'm going to let you go sooner. Uh, so I was taking, uh, we have a meeting at noon with the team and says, I'm going to take a nap. and like. Like 20 minutes ago, everybody started calling me on the team. Like, are you awake? Are you awake? Like, I think so. I don't know if my brain is awake. Elva, how are you doing? Thank God you're here to put some <laughs> sanity on this. Great. Here, I'm just waiting for the Friday and to, to, to see all of you people and to share with you to the show that we have today. So we have uh, Joseph. I'm sorry that I missed yesterday's stream. I am here now. You don't know what you missed last night. Last night, we have a webinar for almost three hours. And we went through the linguistic of um, hostile negotiation. We ran a real hostile negotiation scenario. And it was amazing because we have the luxury to have two hostage negotiators. They were there. Uh, we have a uh, garden girl. Mm, is there a reminder uh, for this? Uh, yeah, if you subscribe to YouTube, our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you go to Susan Ivitz to your our YouTube channel, uh, you can have the reminder. Um, good evening to all. For me, I really don't know if it's like uh, 4, 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. I'm trying to like really wake up. Uh, hello there. Uh, I'm not good with naps, so hello there. <laughs> <laughs> so Mel, Mel says, hello all, hello all, Mel. Oh my God, we are full today. Oh, we have yes. ladies, hi ladies. Uh, hi. We have uh, Blondie, ooh, Blondie. Blondie and Dirty, <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, uh, Garden Girl says, yep, subs. Um, Nay says, love these ladies so much, brain, brains and even more beauty ah oh, thank you very thank much you. i don't feel like it uh we were talking with Elva. like i should put my face on ice <laughs> i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you um uh, a trick that i do when i need to be a keynote speaking or i have few many days uh, of training what i do is you put emeroid creams under your eyes on all your face <laughs> and that contract so it doesn't show you're so blowed uh, today I was such in a rush, then I couldn't do that. But yeah, I do my best. Uh, Samantha says, I'm really looking forward to tonight's show. It's uh, 22, it's 10 p.m. in the UK. Wow, wow Samantha, thank you, thank you very much for being here. And let's bring our special guest who is going to be doing. Okay, that's uh, we're going to bring the guest and we're going to tell you how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Hi, Erin. How's it going? <laughs> okay, Erin, she is our uh, Barbie and she is an amazing friend. She is uh, my partner in crime on uh, Barbie and the Devil. We do Barbie and the Devil. Um, by the way, for the ones who ask, can we break for. Uh, um, uh, because we we have so many classes going on and Barbie and the devil that we take a break until April to stream again. 
that the way I met Erin was, was through Eric Huntley when I was doing phase reading and we clicked like was love at the first sight and we click in so good and we are so good working together and we want to do this bubbly and funny even though it's serious and one of the things that we always says with all the people that I work is you can be serious what what you're talking about but doesn't mean that you need to take the fun on the part of being serious so when we call in it says like are you willing to do your mbti by the way do you know that mbti your myers brick letters are one of the things that people share the most on dating sites yeah I often see it on a dating site, but I, I don't really know what they mean. So I'm excited to learn today. <laughs> well, you're going to be our guinea pig and we're going to do the Myers-Briggs live with you. And after okay. doing the Myers-Briggs, we're going to explain what is the meaning of each letter. And at the end, we have the Myers-Briggs of all of us on the, the three girls on the team that most people uh, see all the time. And we're gonna get the people to see if they guess who's myers break letters mm. and percentage meaning to each of them. So Erin, like always, Barbie, I love you to death. And by the way, uh, Barbie have an amazing show called Such a Catch. Tell us about your podcast and when people can find you because she's the only pink girl that I know that is into a sport more than any dude that I ever met That's in my true. life. Tell us about your, your podcast. Yeah, so I started a podcast. It's called You're Such a Catch. Um, got the name because I would often meet people when I was single. I mean, Susan knows I'm no longer single. But um, when I was single, everybody would, you know, they'd meet me and we'd talk and vibe and they'd say, gosh, you know, how come you're single? You're such a catch. And um, I realized that, you know, not just me, you know, I have all these fabulous girlfriends um, who have great jobs, you know, who are beautiful, who are smart, funny, intelligent. And the common denominator was we we were single. And so I created You're Such a Catch basically as a platform um, for people to, you know, relate to dating stories, to relationship stories, um, to have guests on, like, you know, Susan's been my guest a couple of times. You know, we're evolving in the dating world. We've been dating in COVID with masks on. And, um, you know, so it was interesting to have her on to talk about, you know, how to do that. How do we maneuver when, you know, we're all figuring out this COVID thing together. So, yeah, and it's evolving. So I um, met somebody crazy. Um, <laughs> man I manifested him. All I, did, I, I manifested him. Like, and honestly, he came down from the heavens and showed up on my front door. And now it's kind of evolving from there because, you know, I'm going to have a different perspective, but like, I'm still on a mission to figure out how to replicate um, how I met somebody and our exchange. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Know, be able to do that for for other people so i'm excited yeah i think that's great i i have to be honest i never dating too much i just have like three boyfriends and that's it so three boyfriends at the same time or separate <laughs> no, 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 no at the same time no I, I, it was a separate time Got it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think that that's a, a new world. It's a different world in the dating part because you you have so much so much things over there, and you have to be so aware about um, a lot of things. So I think yeah, it's it's a a different world. It is, and you know sometimes too, like especially um, in COVID, a lot of people are getting divorced, and then they're having to re-enter the dating. Mm -hmm world and maybe you know when they met their significant other you know 10 15 years ago like dating apps didn't exist or the ones that did were like you know match.com you know eHarmony and now people are having to learn and there's so like you guys there are so many apps it's crazy it's crazy yeah, yeah uh, uh, she put me in one of the apps and what it was <laughs> I was calling green 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 no, you were not calling it that girl you were calling it hinder a combination of hinge and tender 
<laughs> yeah, she put me in a dating app and like I, I get in a hinder and uh, hinder and like what? <laughs> I get in hinder. Like, no, it's grinder or uh tinder, like no idea. I just was for 10 days there and like this is crazy. I yeah. cannot do it. I'm thank God I'm back to normal with my old ball chubby guy that <laughs> it's a safe plate and, and he's big chubby ball and when he hugged me is like a teddy bear uh hugging so it's so good to be out of the market <laughs> isn't that funny i mean 2021 who knew uh i'm yeah. too old for this uh oh my god i uh, was talking about the emerald creams under my eyes and says i am 71 and i do the same too susan you see it's an old trick my grandmother teach me when you are puffy, you need to put emeroid creams under your eyes, on your face, and like at least for an hour, your face looks amazing. <laughs> and when you go into a date or you need to go on TV, you need an hour. After that, if you're on a date, you give them so many drinks that they forgot how your face was before and after as <laughs> working. Uh, Blondie says, an, an, I, oh. uh, an INFJ. Whoa, we have a filler. Yeah. Hey Alma, how you doing, my love? Welcome to the club. And says, uh, Garden Girl, that sounds wonderful, Erin. So talking about you and you find love on the most unexpected way. So are we ready to do the test together? Yeah. Garden Girl says, ha ha. Uh, ha ha and what? Then I come back with my teddy bear. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I, I think haha -ha is coming with uh Elba says I was dating two or three <laughs> and Ari says at the same time. Like, <laughs> I was like, if so, you go, girl. It will be great to do it, but no, I didn't have the chance. That's a to lot to keep you know, separate. <laughs> Actually, Elba just celebrate on February 25th, like how many years with your husband? Uh being married, just nine. But being together, 18. Wow. Congratulations. That's what I tell you. It's like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah uh, Garden Gay says, yes, they're coming late. Uh, yeah, better late than never. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do the quiz. Okay. Girl, let's find out. So uh, now, not only you, now you're going to know your uh, Myers Brick type. Uh, this is a free version, and I'm going to put it on the comments so everybody can do it. Uh, it's, yeah, I keep saying that it's an error on no comment. Is, was, uh, no idea. Uh, apparently, Periscope and other things having problems. I, I don't know. It's so many problems with, uh, with, with, with the links. And anyway, this is the link. We post it uh, with time. So... Uh, now we're gonna go there and we're gonna start uh, doing the test with you, my love. So I think I'm sharing the wrong one. Yeah, this is not the one I wanna be sharing. I wanna be sharing the other one so uh, everybody can see it better. Here we go. Now we have it. So first question, are you regularly making new friends? Extremely agree or disagree? Uh, extremely agree. Oh, yeah, you're so extroverted. <laughs> you spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. You spend a lot of your free time. Mm. Mm. Uh, not maybe like the smallest of the green. So you can be neutral or smaller of the green. Oh, neutral then. I'll go neutral. Okay. Since other people cry, can easily make you feel like you want to cry too? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of empathy. Mm -hmm. I will go with the big green. <laughs> big green is good, yeah. Yeah, I know I'll you. say you know me too, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't have, at least that one, that one I could have uh, um, related to you. You often make a backup plan for a backup plan. Mm, no, strongly disagree. <laughs> You usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> How much you you disagree? Uh, oh, you you yeah. agree or disagree? I'm I'm gonna um I don't stay calm, so I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna go the middle of the disagrees. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna give it 50 50. <laughs> yeah, that seems safe. <laughs> At social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. No, I love stranger danger. I oh, no, so I would I would be disagree. Yeah, strongly. I I can talk to a brick wall and make friends. Yeah, I know. I I wish you didn't live so far away in Malibu Beach because you're gonna be my go girl for every event. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can talk to a rock. It's like, yeah, that's the reason you had been so successful in sales. And by the way, Erin worked for many, many years in sales on the automotive, uh, automobile uh, uh, business where it's a man world. And mm -hmm. she always rock it. She's always come up on top. Why? Because the bubbly personality. Because when Barbie's coming, nobody's expecting that she's coming. They're like, brah, it's like a hurricane. What happened? Oh, Barbie was here. Erin was here. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm gonna keep calling you Barbie. Uh, you know what? Oh, at, at, <laughs> at that age is difficult to uh, get uh, all um, all uh, all concept. You prefer to completely finish one project before starting another. Agree or disagree? Um, I'm gonna agree, but I'm gonna agree with the smallest. Yeah, level. Yeah. You're very sentimental. Oh, but yes, all the way. Strong <laughs> degree. <laughs> she make me watch romantic movies like you. Like I hate you for that. You like to use organization to like schedules and lists. Agree or disagree? Okay, I do like a list and I'm a Virgo, so I know I'm supposed to be really on the agree side, but I, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be the smallest of the agree again. Okay. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation can i answer this for yes please do <laughs> a big yeah. agree yes <laughs> again you can talk to a rock you are <laughs> you are not too interested in discussing various interpretation and analysis or create works um do you agree or disagree you are not too interested yeah, in I discussing know. various interpretations and analysis of created works i agree this is kind of this is kind of tricky you agree yeah okay we have 20 percent. this is a long test be patient yeah. people you are more inclined to follow your heart your, your head than your heart no i would follow my heart so i'll disagree Strongly, strongly disagree. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning and particularly, particularly daily routine. Mm. I'm gonna agree with that, but the smallest one. Okay. You rarely worry about where, whether you make a good impression on people you met. Agree. You enjoy participation in group activities. I yes. already have the in the right place. <laughs> yeah. She's the only one who go to parties and things and like, dude, we're on the pandemic. I'm wearing my mask and doing my things, but like I, I need to go out. <laughs> you like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the end? Mm -mm. No. Disagree, yeah. Your happiness comes from helping others accomplish things that your own accomplishing uh, your own accomplishment. I think yeah, I have totally agree. Yeah. yeah. I want all my girlfriends to find love and yeah, more so than myself. Yeah. She's the one who always like is anything like, oh you know what? I have a pimple. Is anything I can do for you? Like it's a freaking pimple. I'm not gonna die for it. And she's like, I can help you. 
I can help you with that. <laughs> Your interest in so many things that you find that difficult to choose what you try next. I'll agree with that. Um, what level? Uh, I'll go in the, right there is good. Yeah. Like that one. You're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. I'm not going to say anything. I know the answer. <laughs> no, I disagree with that. Not a turn for the worse. Mm -mm. She's always like, uh, we have an earthquake her and like, good, so we can have new trees. So she's always on the positive <laughs> side. I don't know how this girl like get it done. You avoid leadership roles in group settings disagree you're definitely not an artistic type of person i disagree you think the world will be better place if people rely more on rationality and less on their feelings mm, i disagree oh my god your heart is bigger than you you know what is funny she have a big brain and most people doesn't know that she is the brain behind barbie and the devil she is the business side on barbie and the devil but at the same time she have a big heart i don't know how you fit those two and your body honey <laughs> you prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax strongly agree mm -hmm. Okay, 40%, we're going to we're going good. You enjoy <laughs> watching people argue. Disagree. You tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. Uh, um, mm, I, I'm gonna go neutral on that. You don't like it, but you do it naturally. Mm, yeah. I don't yeah, I don't love it, which yeah. <laughs> your mood can change very quickly yeah, i'm gonna disagree with that you lose patience with people who are not as efficient as you are uh, i'm gonna disagree with that too i i'm pretty patient yeah but they piss you off anyway <laughs> <laughs> you're patient but doesn't mean that you don't want to chuck them mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> You often ended up doing things at the last possible moment. Oh, I can get caught up in that. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, middle, middle level, yeah. You always been fascinated by the question of what if anything happens after death. That is the weirdest question on this yes. uh, personality yes. assessment. Uh, I agree with it. That. Is you've always been fascinated by the question of what if anything happens after death? I mean kind of agree maybe the smallest um yeah you can you can be neutral too no the smallest agree yeah okay 50 percent, almost there yes. you usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own yeah i'll agree with that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i know already that an extrovert uh, you become bored or lose interest when the discussion get highly theoretical Mm. I'll, I'll i'll probably agree with that uh yeah 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 that's a good one mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the problem when you know the person you're doing the mind break uh you find it easy to empathize with a person whose experience are very different from yours correct yeah i strongly agree you usually postpone finalizing the decisions for as long as possible mm, disagree she is like get it done like <laughs> let's go girl like let's yeah. go and what is the next battle let's fight it cross off something off my list yeah yeah you rarely second guess the choices that you have made strongly agree mm -hmm. After a long and exciting week, a lively social event is just what you need. I'm on the right <laughs> spot. <laughs> yes. This is the only woman who can be like working 16 hours and you tell her, hey, let's go for a, a, a game. What is what? What is the, the, the team that you like? 
the, oh, the Chargers, yeah. The Chargers. Yes. Uh, the Chargers are playing, and after that, we're going for the dinner, and after going to the bar, and I'm, like, I'm going to go to sleep. And Erin is like, let's go yeah, for it. Let's go. I don't think that we're going to disagree that you're an, highly extroverted. Mm -hmm. 60%. No. You enjoy going to our museums. I mean, I do, but I hardly ever do it. So oh, um. it's how you feel is not what you do. Oh, okay. So how I feel. Yeah, I, I uh, enjoy going to our museums. Agree. So which one of the three um, drinks? Medium, probably. The, the small one? Uh, the medium one. The medium. Yeah. Okay. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feeling. Um, no. Yeah. You like to have a to-do list for each day. I do like to have it. It doesn't mean I cross everything off of it, but I do like to have it, and I, I do. Yeah. Again, Myers Brick is what are your tendencies? That, that the reason is this is an assessment, not a test. Not all we, we follow through, but under a stress situation, that is what we lean to go to. Okay. So that's you need to answer what we doesn't mean that you don't do it. That means that is your is is your preferences. Yeah. You rare you rarely feel insecure. Um, I would agree with that. I'll agree with that on the middle level. Yeah. You avoid making phone calls. Disagree. You often spend a lot of time trying to understand view that are very different from yours, your own. Um, yeah, I'll go agree middle. 70%, yahoo! <laughs> In your social so circle, you are often the one who contact your friends and initiate activity. Can I answer for you? Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm a terrible planner, but I, I do definitely keep the conversation going. Yeah, so agree. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as is possible. Mm, I'm gonna go neutral on that. I, I'm i really? Yeah. Are you still bothered by mistake that you made a long time ago? No, disagree. You rarely com contemplate the reasons for human ex ex existence or the meaning of life? Like, what the <laughs> heck is Darwin doing here? Um, I will agree with that. <laughs> if, I, I don't ever... <laughs> Your emotions control you more than you control them? Uh, mm, I'll go um, lowest level of agree. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Feels right. <laughs> you take care not to make people look bad. Uh, you you take great care not to make people look bad, even when it's commonly their fault. Agree. Mm -hmm. 80%. Your personal work style is closer to a spontaneous burst of energy than organized and consistent efforts. I disagree. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. That is a horrible question to me. Yeah. Disagree. You will love you will love a job that require you to work alone most of the time. Disagree. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Pandemic has been like torture, bamboo stick under your nails. <laughs> you believe that pondering abstract philosophy. Okay, I, I we need to refrain. You believe that pondering abstract philosophical question is a waste of time. Oh, um, <laughs> 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 agree, like, a, like, <laughs> yeah. agree, but maybe like the smallest one. 
How's that? <laughs> you feel more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmosphere than quiet, intimate places. Amen. Agree. <laughs> You will at first learn how someone is feeling. Agree. 90%, almost there. Woo! You often feel overwhelmed. Mm, I'll disagree like the middle one. You complete things met methodic, method methodically without uh, skipping over any step like Just if you three. do a do do the list and like i'm going to like one two three i don't skip steps no i'm terrible at that disagree yeah but you're very organized when we work together <laughs> you're very intrigued by things label it as controversial mm. i'm intrigued but i that's true yeah i would go agree agree uh maybe yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> susan knows me <laughs> yes. yeah but i cannot be answering for you that I know, but you know, you know, yeah uh, honey i'm a profiler and i've been working with you for the last six months like can i oh, know yeah. you you will pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed more i i probably i would yeah i'm gonna agree with that i'll go middle middle agree you struggle with deadlines. Disagree. You feel confident that things will work out for you. Strongly agree. Biggest one, yep. Your gender, female, last time we check. We still <laughs> female. <laughs> Let's hope it's the same. <laughs> I, I'm just checking. I never, I don't know. People change so often. So, you Oh, my God. Okay, we're gonna write this so we make sure yes. you are. An, I says you're gonna be an extrovert. Your extroversion is ninety three percent. Like you are E S F F J. Oh my God, your your emotion. Okay, your biggest numbers are extroversion and emotions. Mm, that's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> You're an extrovert with a heart exposed. Yeah, right on my sleeve. <laughs> so we're going to put uh, 93, uh, 42, 42, uh, oh my God, 96. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I haven't met, like, wow. And Jay is uh, 68, 64, 64, I'm sorry. So you can go in the middle. So you are the console. So I'm gonna send you the hundred and fifty, um, hundred and sixty pages. Oh, wow. a lot. okay. <laughs> yeah. So you can analyze. But it makes sense to you your results? Yeah. Can you explain to me a little bit more about the the bottom one, the um, the tactics? So does that mean I'm judgmental? Oh, uh, uh, no. And that's what we're going to be doing now. We're going to oh, be talking okay. about what is the meaning of each letter and why people have such a misperception uh, of Myers-Briggs. Okay, you have 76% assertive. Wow, I'm actually surprised about that. Um, I'm not. Like, when you make decisions, when you the decisions are done, and, and I have business meeting with you, and like, Okay, I don't think this is working. That's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to change it. Let's move on. You mm. are really assertive on that. Mm, okay. So we're going to stop sharing this, and we're going to start sharing uh, our screen, and we're going to explain what are those letters. And we have comments. Uh, we have some emphasis. Uh, I did my test already. I'm an A, A extrovert, sensing, uh, feeling Receiving. Okay. Oh, Samantha. Let's see. I don't know if you remember the 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 the, the amount. Ooh, look who's show up. Thomas Carr. My favorite. <laughs> I suspect that Erin is an ambivert. She's equally introverted and extroverted. Like no, dude. 
No. You're so wrong. She's like 93% extrovert. Like, nope, <coughs> professor, you are not on that one. The question is where she de derived her energy from other human beings, extroversion, or from when introversion. She clearly has external and internal energy sources. Thought Erin is an ambivert. Oh, you have an admirer, honey. <laughs> Love Thomas. <laughs> Everybody loved Thomas. Alma is laughing. Uh, I don't know what part of the things are laughing, Alma. Uh, John Pactusen, uh last took the, the test the test a few years back. I on INTP. This test upgraded me to INTPT. Uh, was that a recent addition or the or did work give me a chip test? Uh, no, what happened is uh, the version that we did is the free version. Mm -hmm. It's not the original Myers-Briggs. But what happened is with the Myers-Briggs test, it's paid test. So it doesn't vary too much alone on what are the, the letters meaning. What you maybe can change is like the numbers. So uh, John, I would say what it give you is uh, that you are less assertive, meaning that when you need to make a decision, uh, it takes you longer to make the decision because you're an introvert, you're an intuitive, you're a thinker, and you're a perceiver. And now we're going to understand why the T coming at the end. And I'm sure that uh, T on the end coming from the N and your P your intuition and perceiving. And now we're going to explain what it is because one of the things that happen is I'm tired of people who never understood, never took the um, Myers-Briggs, start talking about what is Myers-Briggs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start uh, sharing the presentation. And let's see if Susan get it. Uh, they mess it up. She messed it up. Oh, like you, will. you will get it. You will get it. I think that's the one. I'm sharing the presentation. Yes. I'm sharing the black or the two. Uh, well, it's not in a presentation mode, but it's the document PowerPoint. Okay. So why is not showing? I did show the presentation completely no okay. it's showing the the powerpoint document you see erin i still doing these things <laughs> no worries <laughs> okay now i do have it now oh, yeah. i do have it yes now i do have the right one uh so we have um I got 91% introverted, uh, heard me in life. Uh, Maiden, do you think that uh, that represents you, that the, you are an introvert? And by the way, let's talk about what it means, each of them. So today we're going to be talking about Myers-Briggs and the meaning of each one of those letters that people use so much, but we don't know what they mean. So... If you want to know what we're doing, remember you, if you have been missing any of the webinars, you can go to humanbehaviorhackerschool.com and you're going to find the paid webinars that we have. If you want to know what are the events that are coming, humanbehaviorlab.com-webinar. Uh, my advice will be to like to try to uh, subscribe to uh, YouTube is the best way because Facebook is going crazy, Periscope is going crazy, all the other things going crazy. But the one who always let you know where we're going and what we're doing is YouTube. That's what I do with um, Erin, with Eric Huntley, with Robert Barnes, um, Viva Fry. So when I know what, I, what, what was going on, I subscribe to the YouTube channel and automatically show me when they're going live. So remember that we are live every Wednesday and Friday, 4.05 p.m. And if the host doesn't fall asleep because take a nap longer than <laughs> should. Hey, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm human. I've been up since 6 o'clock in the morning and until 2 o'clock in the morning all week. Elva, you're my witness. Uh, yeah. 
yeah. Yesterday it's we right. did a three-hour webinar with uh, wow. two hostage negotiators. Like that was super intense. I couldn't intense. go to sleep. I was so high I couldn't go to sleep. It was amazing. By the way, if you miss it, go to our website. Uh, we have comments. Um, Samantha said, I don't remember the percentage I didn't take the test today. I was the while ago. Uh, well, the percentage are important because if, yeah. if you are between 40 and 60 percent, that meaning that you can navigate both. Mm -hmm. You can have ambiversion and both and sensing and feeling and, and different things. Uh, we have James. Hi, James. How are you doing? Hey, ladies. LinkedIn seems to be having some issues. And I'm um, so I came to YouTube to give you uh, gals a shout out. Tentacles up. Um, we are not showing in LinkedIn. I didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. Like, StreamYard. Yeah. Get things together. Technology. Anyway, maybe we post it later. So... If you wanted to take the test again after and you're going to take it for free, you can go to 16personalities.com and you can go to the free test. It's going to be the easiest way. Now, what it is and what is not. And one of the things is that is my certification and my certification number, then I'm a certified Myers Brick trainer. So, if you want to hear someone talking about Myers-Briggs, make sure they know what they're talking about because most people is clueless. At least I'm crazy, but I'm certified crazy. So <laughs> that is an advantage. So what we can use Myers-Briggs to help in life be beside love and dating. And believe me, uh, in dating life helps a lot because what are going to, for example, Erin, you have a 93% extroversion. Can mm -hmm. you imagine be with someone who have 93% introversion? No. We would not be <laughs> compatible. <laughs> no, the weekends would and the weekends and the weekdays would be like freaking crazy. So we can use it in communication, leadership, decision making, managing changes, stress and resilience, conflict, and team building. Now MBTI for ethical purpose never used to be used for selection, promotion on the motion, because Myers Brick is when the stress factors come into life, is what our tendencies doesn't mean that you always gonna be that way. But as soon as you know where your stressors stressors are, it's that what you can manage and go to. Uh, redundancy, performance, or disciplinary issues. As a certified Myers Break practitioner, you need you know that MBTI assessment do not predict skill, abilities, or performance. Using the Myers Break assessment for selection of performance managers is unethical. If somebody used Myers Break to determine if you get a job or not, that is unethical because it shouldn't be determined if you're good or not for your job. Unfortunately, because some organizations do use this way, the framework has been mis misrepresented and can be criticized, dismissed, or viewed as a skeptical by participants. So it's not what we do, it's how we do it. What you can use my risk assessment for? Increase self-awareness and awareness on others. <clears throat> if I do know my preferences to work with others on a relationship, it's going to be easy for me and for others to interact each other. Highlighting potential strength and blind spot, improving performance in areas like communications, decision making and stress management helping people to work together more efficiently, effectively, and more uh, improving the work team, improved well-being. If I know that I'm an ambivert and you guys are extrovert, I can come today and say, you know, guys, I know it's Friday and everybody want to go out for a beer, but I need to my own time. I need my me time in order to be present. So instead to go for a beer at 6 p.m., what about if we go in at 8 p.m.? 
where I feel more charged mm -hmm. and I feel better and I feel more uh, present, that would be great because you're not taking personally and I don't make you feel like I'm not engaged or I don't like you. Just that is my way to uh, recharge energy. And Samantha says, oh, that's really interesting. I will have to take the test again to see. I would say try to take the test again. But like we were talking with Erin, don't think on the things that you do, but what are your preference to do it? Mm -hmm. So let's start digging because again, we are five, 45 minutes away and we have our faithful group today. It's gonna be crazy. So 16 Myers-Brick personality types. We're gonna start understanding the letters. Extroversion versus introversion. Opposite way to direct and receive energy. Has nothing to do with being shy, has nothing to do with being uh, playful or not talking. Has to do with how you recharge your energy. You're using gas, gas you use it oil or you use it electrical. That's the way. That's basically what it meant. Sensing and intuition. Since we use the I for introversion, we give intuition the N is how we take information. Thinking and feeling is doesn't mean that you're gonna be, if you have high in feeling, doesn't mean that you're gonna be crying on the corner all the time. It has to do with how we decide and come to conclusions with things. We're using our left brain or we're using our right brain. And judging and perceiving is how to approach the outside world. If you high in a and a J doesn't mean that you're going to be judging. It's how you're going to be organizing things. Introversion and extroversion. First one. If you're an extrovert, you direct their energy and attention to the outward. Focus on the outside world of people and activities. Now. If you're an introvert, you direct their energy and attention in the inward. You're more a uh, self uh, self uh, pace. You want to be with yourself in order to make decisions. You don't need an audience to make a decision. With an extrovert, need an audience to make a decision. I always says if you uh, if you have an if, if you're in a meeting and you're talking with an extrovert and you don't know what they think is because you haven't been paying attention. If you want to know what an introvert think, you haven't done the questions. So we're both opposite with usually both with equal comfort and confident. They come up to the same conclusion. They can go to the same meeting after a stress uh, day of work they can go to the same point, but the point is how they get the energy to execute what they're gonna be doing is gonna be different. One is gonna go and gonna need a resource of energy and um, a group of people. Other one is gonna like, you know guys, I'm gonna take two hours, I'm gonna go to my hotel room, I'm gonna take a shower, I'm gonna watch cartoons and I'm gonna see you on the lobby at eight. That basically the difference between introversion and extroversion. One of the things that most people confuse, if an introvert know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. can be perceived and be more aggressive than any extrovert person that you're going to find on the planet. That is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have. Mm -hmm. So the University of Pennsylvania find a ground on the middle. We have somebody called ambiversion. It's people who they're either the introversion or extroversion is too high or on the middle, but they can adapt like a chameleon to be using that energy, recharging energy, depending on the situation they have. And that's what they found. An ambivert make 24% more revenue than an introvert and 32 percent more than an extrovert mm -hmm. so that concept that for sales rep position you need to have a person who's an extrovert 
more than 65% of the population in the world is an introvert or an ambivert. So if you put only extroverted people in front of people to sell, and I'm an introvert or an ambivert, and you come into me too much energy, too much strong, what is going to happen? It's going to crash. Yeah. Uh, Erica says, uh, I have, I have taken this many times over the years. I fluctuated between INTJs and an INFJ. Uh, my thinking feeling score today was almost equal 52, 48. That's what I'm saying about that. Remember what I'm saying is when it's between 40 and 60, meaning that fluctuated. If you take the test, on a day that maybe you're too or a little more emotional or a little you more draining and those numbers are between 40 and 60 you know they're going to be fluctuating my last letter of my myers brick then i'm not going to tell you because you need to discover who is who uh, uh, on the team at the end of the, the the presentation uh fluctuate fluctuated all the time so when I get certified, I tell the woman like, okay, I'm doing the certification, but I think that this is not accurate. They're like, it is accurate. It has to do with you because that is the letter who fluctuate and makes sense, depending what is the position that you are taking. When you're emotional or not, that's what is fluctuated. So Erica, it makes all the sense, uh, the letter who change. Uh, sometimes you, you, you are completely left brain but you allow yourself to be emotional. So nothing wrong with that. People survive that. Now we're going to talk about the opposite way we take information, who, by the way, has to do with the ears too. You can determine what somebody's sensing or intuitive for what, Elba? For the ears and for the earlobes. Uh, sorry, for the size of the ears. Yeah, so we can determine, actually, um, Elva, myself, and the team, we have been working on doing a correlation between Myers Brick and uh, face reading. So, what do you mean sensing? Sensing focus on present realities, fact, their own experience, and what of frustrate others. Now, intuition has to do with focus on ideas and theories, the big picture and future possibilities. Basically, a sensing person is going to be looking, oh, this is a forest with five trees. An intuition person it says like, oh, my God, this is an amazing, beautiful picture of the forest. Like, dude, there are four trees. That's it. So I always give the same example. Uh, uh, my teddy bear, uh, he is a high in intuition and I'm high sensing. So when I remember the first, the second day we went out and we went to the uh, mother, uh, the, the art museum here in Chicago, and we went to see an Andy Warhol uh, exposure. And we saw the, five, the, the, the famous can of soup and says, who the heck paid million dollars for a freaking picture of a can of soap? I can go to the supermarket, take a picture, go and frame it. And he's like, oh my God, that is mother art. Like, dude, it's a freaking can of soup. <laughs> and so we spent like two hours going to the, all the exhibition. And at the end, when he started getting pissed off and like, oh, I'm sorry, honey, I forgot. You're high in intuition. Like, yeah, like, okay. For you is mother on, for me is a freaking can of soup. So you're not going to buy any of the paintings. You're not going to buy any of the things. Let's go to the supermarket. Let's go home. I'm going to take a picture and I promise it's going to look the same. So what happened with sensing and intuition is when you have a person who is sensing is like, guys, we have a business plan. We need to uh, publish every day at 2 p.m. and we need to create the art. What the person with the high in intuition is like, oh, we need to get created and we need to get and like you meet with that person two days after and like, I'm sorry, you was on the meeting that I was with? Like, what do you mean? Like, it's not what I'm talking about. Sensing people tend to be more ground earthed, like 
this is how I see it, more bullet point, when intuition has to do more with the creative and their turn to mean for more mm -hmm. flow. So if you have in a meeting, that's one of the things the things that we always do, Myers Brick, when we talk about team building, because sometimes you think like this person is lying to me. Like, no, it's not lying to you. It they seeing things in a different way than you see it, and depending how high you are. For example, in your case, Erin, you're 42. Okay. So you can be really pragmatical or you can be more bubbly, depending on the situation. You can be like, oh, love and hearts and unicorns, but like, okay, but at the end of the day, we need to pay the bills. Yeah. You can navigate both. Make sense? Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we all use sensing and intuition when we take in information about the world. But we we what but we usually do not use then equal ease or trust. People tend to have a preference of one on another. Which one do you think that you feel more uh, approach? Like more ground to earth, and I, I go back to like focus on the present reality or focus on ideas and theory. And again, this is not a wrong or right way to be is to understand how we process information. And even though we are always in control, when we feel the level of stress are getting too high, mm -hmm. that's what we tend to do. And uh, for whatever reason, in the last two months, I went through a lot of stress that I never been before in my life. And it was amazed me how I use my preferences in a way like, Oh my god this is scary i'm so like that but i didn't realize it until i really need to go to the high level of stress to prove it to myself so now we're going to go to thinking and feeling opposite ways to decide and come to conclusions a thinking decide by assessing logical objective consequence of choices define fairness as treating everyone as equal. When a feeling person decide by assessing relevant personal social values, define fairness as treating everyone as unique. I'm gonna give an example. A company have to cut 20% of uh, the expenditure. A feeling person is gonna say like, okay, I'm going to talk to everyone and I'm going to tell everybody, like, start bringing your own coffee. We're not going to have any more lunch uh, on the cafeteria. And we're going to try to, like, uh, stop uh, having a uh, parking slot. Uh, we're going to rent the parking spot so we can uh, save money. A thinking person is like, okay, who's the less productive? Fire them. Next. They're always left brain. So the difference is thinking as left brain feeling is right brain the thinking is gonna get i need to get done they're surgical mm -hmm. if in order to save the body i need to cut the arm that is going to be the sinker the thinker mm -hmm. the feeler is like but what if i'm out if we cannot need to cut the arm and just chop the fingers like that is not going to save the life what is going to happen to the person how is going to feel i don't care how they feel I need to get the job done and I'm going to get it done. That would happen with feeling and thinking. So we can all think and feeling when making decisions. And if your numbers are like between 40 and 60, you can be accommodating depending the situation and the stress level. For example, you can be more feeling on your personal life and you can be more thinking in your business life. But you, we usually, we do not use them in equal comfort because they're like crashing with each other. Everyone typically have a preference for one or another. How do you think is your preference? Because beside what the assessment says, not this, it's not a test, it's an assessment, you need to, when you when somebody explained to you, one of the problems with Myers Break is people threw the letters and they say, ah, oh, you're this and this. And like, no, I'm not a failure. I'm not an emotional person. Doesn't mean that you're emotional. 
is that you're going to be right brain and you're going to treat everybody as an equal. You're going to be more fair. When you're a thinker, you're going to be like, it's black or, black or white. When you're a feeler, you're, you're in a gray area. So that allow you to be sometimes a better manager because you're going to have mm -hmm. in consideration things that you may be, you're not going to have it if you're not a high F or you don't have a balanced F. A high F is kind of tricky. Erin, you're 96. <laughs> Honey, get a lot of tissue paper because you're gonna need it. <laughs> do you think do you think you fall in that category? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, judging and perceiving, and this is one of the worst people go crazy, crazy. I'm not a judging person. It's, it's opposite ways to approach the outside world. You have agendas, you make uh, deadlines, you like a uh, list and cross and list, or you need somebody else who tell you, hey, this need to get done, get it done, and they wait until the last minute to do it. But a anyway, both do it right. So basically judging people with a J on the Myers break, use their T or F preference to decide and take actions as soon as, as possible based on available information. May feel frustrated and annoying when others insist on gathering more information before deciding. It's like, this is the plan, this is the deadline. I want the deadline as Friday, 5 p.m. If the person have a high J, you better give it the deadline by 3 p.m. Because by 3.15, they're gonna chop your head even though the deadline is at 5 p.m. So the perceiving use their S or N preference to gather more and more information before deciding. It's the people who keep Googling and like, mm -hmm. dude, after three times that you find out the same result in Google, maybe it's a time to stop. Maybe it's enough information. It's good enough for you to like get all the things and land in the plane. Please, can you land the plane? So the judging is going to land the plane with five examples. The perceiving is going to be keep flying because they want to keep taking pictures of the pan the ge geographic, even though it's not going to change. Maybe they're going to find something the judging is not going to find. But how much is too much? You need to decide. If what you do want to do is a cake, uh, just decide what cake would you want to do and give it to the judging. Don't give the recipe finding to a perceiving because they're going to come out with 20, 20, 20, 22, 23 ways to do a cake. And like, okay, I just want to do a cake. I don't need 23 ways to do a cake. I need one cake. Just tell me what are the ingredients. May feel frustrated and annoying when others insist on deciding before all the information is available. So in your case, you're 64 uh, on the J. So you tend to like, okay, black, white, I can make gray with these two color. How many combinations of gray I can do is good enough. But Erin, it's another colors like they tell, like you're Henry Ford, do the cars the way you want it mm -hmm. as soon as uh, the all there are black. <laughs> it's done. You want me to sell black cars? I'm going to be selling black cars. You're not going to be arguing that maybe at the research market. No, you tell me selling black cars, I'm going to be selling black cars. And I'm going to get it done. Make sense to your yeah. uh, Jay? Mm -hmm. I, you don't, you don't uh, waste time in gathering information. You get more in like, what are the deadlines? What are the goals that I need to do? And what I need to get the, the, the delivering the goals. Yeah. Uh, perceiving is a person who's like, oh, wait a minute. I found another way to do it. And um, I need to keep researching. And you know what? I find a study that the perfect team, like everything in life, is to have each letter of each one. Mm -hmm. Because... We all use in judging and perceiving as part of our lifestyle, but we usually, we do not use them with equal comfort. Everyone typically has a preference in one another. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is all the combination, the basic combination that we can use. So, in any team, in order to work, you need an extrovert that help you, an introvert or an ambivert, and is when like you are been doing a training for two days and you like dragging yourself to uh, the bed and like I can do this and they call you and says wake up bitch we need to go live do it <laughs> that is that is the team that you need that's the reason you need everyone in a team but if you don't know the preferences you cannot help others and others cannot help you and you cannot compliment. So sensing and intuition is how we take information, how we perceive the kind of soup and how we think this mother on. Not misrespectful, not taking personal, but still for me it's a kind of soup. Maybe because I, I, I was the daughter of an artist who like spent like hours like painting one circle. Thinking and feeling is decide and come to conclusions judging and perceiving is approaching to the outside world now why type preference matters people who know and use their types are six point per, six point more likely to be engaged at work because if i do know my preferences and i can share it with you we can work better as a manager if i know the preferences of my team we can work better. 7.8% more productive in the role. Because if you know that you're a high A, J, or a high P, and for example, a high J is about deadline, deadline. A high P need to slap on the back of the head and like, I need you to get the deadline. You can be more productive because you know what are you maybe thinner part of your productivity and you can pair with people who complimenting you and make you better and six more time more likely to do what they do best every day if you know that you are good on sensing you can go around and be a project manager and tell everybody like okay no that's what we need to do if you're a thinker you can go to the feelers who are going around like Oh, the client told me doesn't like the product like it's not personal honey just go to the next client so you know who you put and you can be more uh productive in your work but again if we don't know who we are how we know how to maximize and do the best of we can have so this is are the 16 different combinations now we have a game these are the percentage of the people on the team. Who can know who is who? And uh, Garden Girl says, I am an INFP uh, mediator. Good. So somebody can guess. <clears throat> okay, it's time to guess. <laughs> I don't know in what media we are uh, like streaming, like really, seriously. I lost. I we are on LinkedIn. I saw it. Okay, we are in LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, yes. On LinkedIn. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, we are on LinkedIn. Let's mm -hmm. see if we are in Facebook. Uh, okay, guess who is who? Who is an ISTP? Introversion 98%, sensing 86, thinking 97, and perceiving 52. Who do you think is that person on the group? Erin, you can participate too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's the other person besides you two? Uh, there are myself, Elva, and Anne. Anne is the project manager. Mm. It's just very interesting that they're, you're all introverts. I find that interesting. <laughs> and, and like the, the bottom two are like so s similar. Oh, that, that, that they're, they're twin separated of birth. It's, it's amazing. They work, they, that, that, that two people work really good together. Who's going to be guessing? Well, I definitely feel like then that the bottom two are you two, but I don't know which is which. And then the top one is the project manager. That's my assumption. 
So do you think that, uh, okay, Alma says, Elva is ISFG 89. Uh -huh. Okay, we have one number. So you says that I am which one, Erin? That one, I think. Oh, I think you two are the bottom two, but I don't, I don't know which is which. What? Tell me the S is what again? S is sensing. So Alma says that uh, Elva is the eighty-nine percent of ISG, and is the sixty-eight percent J. It says, I feel Elva is ISTP. Okay, keep going. This is yes. getting, this is starting getting funny. Yes. <clears throat> Let's see what else, what to. Until now, nobody got it right. Eh, no. <laughs> nobody has. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Give it some time. <clears throat> If you have been listening to our uh, live, you're going to find out why. I is introversion, S is sensing, T is thinking, P is perception, F is feeling, J is judging. But in the other hand, you want to understand why the group is working so well together. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Alma is laughing. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, Gardner says, Anne is one, Susan is two. Okay, I think Susan is ISFG and Elva is ISTP. Uh, Susan is ISTP, maybe. <clears throat> IS. ISFG, middle is Susan, bottom is Elva, ISTP is Anne. Susan is ISTP. Okay, keep going. Okay, this is yes. this is start getting funny. More. I want more. Yes, we need more. We need more. Okay. We do we do this game with clients when we do presentations and they never get it right. <laughs> nope. No, it's the misperception. Yeah. Okay, two more and we tell it. Uh, Elva is I S F G. -G. Yeah, but which one? We because we, we have two us I S F G. So let's work on the uh, feelings. Elva is fifty one or Elva is seventy five. What do you think? Uh, Sandra, uh, Samantha says, this is so hard. Like, it's no hard. <laughs> Actually, it's fun. We have having fun yeah. together. Uh, Ron says, uh, Susan is ISTP. Uh, Sandra, okay. Susan and ISFG. Okay, what else? Before we, like, develop who is who. Yes. We have one more, I think, now. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. One become Facebook by follow primers. Oh, no, this is uh, 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 this is a robot, uh, false information. This person has nothing to do with us. Uh, she is, okay, I want to block. I don't know how to block this person, but I'm going to make sure that I block it after the show. Sorry, my apologies. Apparently, there are robots uh, that are trying to get because we have too many audience. So, Sara says 75%. You say 75% is Elva? I think so. Okay. Uh, Garden is Susan is one, Elva is third. Uh, fun but hard, yeah. <laughs> but if it's not fun, you're not gonna be here. You're in London, my love. For you, is like 
one o'clock in the morning. You definitely having fun. That's the reason you are here. So, uh, yes. Uh, Sarah England, I'm trying to follow. So, uh, so Elva is 75 feelings. What we do? We give two more options. Yeah, just Come give on, it two more. One more minute. It's we are one minute away from being in like an hour and fifteen minutes. One more, and we're gonna develop who is who. Okay. Anyone else? One more. So the first one is ISTP, ninety-eight percent introvert, eighty-six percent sensing. 97% thinking, 52% per perceiving. The second one, ISFG, that the reason why it's important, the percentage is introversion 88, sensing 58, feeling 51, judging 68. And, okay, uh, Susan, not much feeling like, <laughs> 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 bitch, why are you saying that? So the third one is IFG, but they have different number. Introversion 89, sensing 81, feeling 75, judging 56. Okay, we have more. Um, so Elva is the bottom with 75. Uh, Susan, not much feeling. Like, again, people keep saying that I need to donate my heart because I never use it. Erin, you it. know me. Yes, I even you have a, a long way. <laughs> I even have a fake heart for you. Yes, <laughs> it's true. These are facts. <laughs> so, middle one is Susan. Bottom is Elva. Uh, Susan is the thinker. Okay, uh, we gonna keep playing, or are we going for it? I think maybe we can just give the answers because I think people is going like getting crazy. <laughs> Okay. Okay, come on. Come on, don't, don't, don't. That's me. That's Elva. And that's Anne. I'm 98% introvert and 97% thinker. I'm completely left brain. I don't have any way to express emotion because i don't know how to but what happened with in high highly 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 introverted before decide to live in on the forest is when they talk about what they know they are extremely mm -hmm. aggressive and they come up like oh they know it all like no because it's the only thing that we can talk that's one of the reasons networking for highly introverts is difficult so for me networking is getting easy because what i do is so freaked out the people is interested in what i do not in me so it's easy for me to talk about it uh, susan i am not a bitch i was right you are a thinker <laughs> no i'm not saying something that you're a bitch i am a thinker i left brain i'm thinking all the time it's like i Sometimes I take a week off in the middle of the week and Elva and Anne and the rest of the, the, rest of the team are like, oh, fucked up. What is going to happen tomorrow? Susan is going to come up with something. I'm a sensing, high sensing. So all my numbers are introversion are high, sensing are high. I always see the tree. To mm -hmm. me, it's a freaking can of soup. So instead to pay $5 million, I'm going to go to the supermarket. I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to frame it. I says, I know, lol. <laughs> so true about introverts. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, when inter people confuse is how we intake information, what how we recharge information. For example, I needed to take a nap for two hours because I've been exposed so much that I says, guys, I'm gonna take a nap. Call me to wake me up. So sensing is high. I'm gonna see the kind of soup. Thinking it's about like. Okay, when you stop crying, let, we can talk. Now, my P is 52, me, meaning that I need pressure. Why? Because I tend to go like a balloon. 
like searching and searching and searching. The good news about that is I discovered things that maybe other people miss. The bad news, we have Anne who kicked my butt. Mm -hmm. Anne is the person on the team who slapped me on the back of the head and like, Susan, uh, your presentation is ready. If you do not review it, if you don't download it, I'm going to erase it in 24 hours. And she was hired for that. And thank God to Anne for that. Because if it's not, I would be like Googling and Googling <laughs> and going all of our, around the way. Um, you got your guys the wrong way around. I got you guys the way around. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying is like, one thing is what you see and what other thing is what people is. Lisa, hi ladies, damn I'm late. But you can see the recording. Yes. Uh, Blonde says, curious if there are studies that show most common traits for women with uh, Asperger's. Uh, I'm not an uh, I'm not a, a therapist. I'm not um, a psychologist. So my apologies. Uh, if you write me at the end, you're gonna see my email. I can see what studies we have. We have a 12 terabyte drive with studies about everything that you can imagine. Why? I think everybody's high thinking and uh perceiving so everybody like google and google so for example elva she's an introvert but she can go out of her introversion a little more she have kids she's married so she needs to socialize she's sensing she can see the art and she can see the can of soup <laughs> she can go do both and like well it looked like art we can made it home but it's art at the end of the day. So she can navigate. She's mm. more a feeler, but she's only 51. And believe me, when this bitch get pissed off, <laughs> my 97 thinking doesn't have nothing to do. This woman can slap your face. She's the one who have tell me like, this person on the team need to go. Like, but like, no, it's need to go. Uh, done, done, done. So she can navigate both because her judging is 68. Like, mm -hmm. This is the deadline. The person didn't meet the deadline. We need to let it go. It's not part of the team. This is a family. This is a team. We need to make it happen. Elva? Yes. I'm like that. Yes. Totally. And Anne, the sweet Anne, who kicked out our bot and says, um, how do introverts get on YouTube? I'm so shy. Oh. Uh, one of the biggest and most good things who happened to introverts was pandemic and bear with me when the pandemic hit people like me that all in the team they're highly introvert like yes we're gonna be working from home we don't need to travel the problem is introverts are not exercised in how to reach to others for uh, socializing why because we're not used to we are not socializing. Well, we, 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 we don't know how to. Why? Because we like to get information and get energy from ourselves. So extroverts have more, uh, more tools to socialize the introvert have. Why? Because they're used to do it. So I would say for an introvert, start, start slowly going to safe places where you can talk about things that you know and things that you are feeling comfortable. Elva, you're the other introvert. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's like, for example, for me, talking in YouTube and everything, the first time was like crazy. I just sweating and start hy hyperventilating and everything. But I know what I know. And I felt really comfortable when the things that I know. So that's how I can talk about it. Because I know about, for example, face reading. It's like my passion. So I, I I, don't feel like shy when talking. But if you put me in a party or something and you said to me, like, just go and make some friends. It's like, uh-uh. No, no, no. Please don't do that to me. I just want to be my home and sleep. So, yeah. Uh, Erica says, yes, high introverted. The pandemic didn't change much for me. Uh, that's what I'm saying. 
uh, for the introverts, the pandemic was like, oh my God, great, finally, I don't need to see people. But on the other hand, we don't know how to reach others. And that can be a problem because we can mm -hmm. tend to get on the cocoon. Yeah. So, for example, Elva and I, we compliment really good because she's highly judging, high, higher than I am judging. She's 68. Either Anne is an introvert too, so we can understand this space. We give each other a space that is really important in a team because we understand that Elva can be sending emails at four o'clock in the morning when Anne can be sending emails at 4 p.m. in the morning and I can be sending emails at 8 p.m. in the morning and at, uh, at the evening. But because we know we introvert, we have our own space. Mm -hmm. Now, all of us heart sensing. Elva is the less sensing. That is great because she have the perspective to like, ah, uh, no, it's the same presentation, but I'm going to be changing the picture. Why? Because it doesn't look good. So she's mm -hmm. the aesthetic person on the group who help us to like, no, 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 Susan, I don't like the picture. I'm going to change the picture. But uh, Elva, nobody has seen this presentation before. Like, nope, send it to me. I'm going to change the picture. And when I wake up in the morning, I find that all the pictures are new. Why? Mm -hmm. Because she had the, uh, the, 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 the intuition that it want to make it look better. I'm not a feeler. So the higher feeler is Anne. Even though, believe me, that girl can get a, a, a flip-flop and slap you on the ass if she needs to. She's more emotional about that, learning to express and allow her to talk and ask her how you're feeling. And she's going to express it and she's going to be more considerate. But believe me, when this woman needs to make a decision, I think she's worse than Elba and myself. Mm -hmm. Anne can be like a knife in the neck. Why? because she's she's high judging this need to be done and that's the reason she's the project manager and she is this expert on linguistic she's introvert she's sensing so like this is how they need to look she's feeling she's more emotional and it's good for us because elva and i like mine okay you need to understand my thinking is 97 elva is 51 feeling and and is 75 feeling like I'm completely in another continent. <laughs> and she's a judging 56. So she's the one, even though Elva have a high judging, because uh, Anne understand her work is to keep us all on track. She's like going and going and going. And believe me, she have erased my files for my driver because I didn't download it on time because it's her job and she feel that her responsibility is mm -hmm. to keep me on track and keep Elma and Elva and myself on track and I love it and I didn't put the other people on the team because they don't want to be exposed um, okay let's leave uh -huh. so what does it mean if you have dash an extra letter uh, has to do with assertiveness or no assert assertiveness. Um, Myers Brick do not talk about assertiveness and uh, and not assertiveness. So I would discard the last the the, the last letter. Um, you can if you want send me an email. I can send you a report that what it's meant based on sixteen personalities. But Myers Brick doesn't read assertiveness. Uh, but this is the free test that we have, so everybody can do it. I understand knowing what you know. It is difficult for me to deal with negative people. Comments like even on Facebook. Uh, very sensitive, I guess. Um, Sandra, I'm sorry. Um, can you repeat me what is your um, bias rate? But I, I guess your F is high. Sandra, I'm trying to see if I can find... You're, um, I'm sorry, we have so many comments. And by the way, we have a bot who, Sandra, if you can tell me what is your letters, I can tell you why. Uh, you know what? People is mean because they don't charge for it. So 
if it's free, everybody can do it. Just put a lot of Vaseline or oil and let it run to your skin. And if people is mean to you, just block them. That is the magic of uh, technology. You don't like it, go for it. Yes, that is an A mean. Uh, Garden Girl says I am INFPA, uh, meaning that you're an introvert, uh, intuitive, feeling, perceiving, and an assertive person. That's what the A mean. That's why we're such a great team. That's why you are such a great team. Yeah, because we complement in each other and we respect each other and we work in our strength and we own our weakness and we talk we didn't we didn't talk about weakness we talk about things that need to be improved and we improve on that and we talk about that and we meet three times or more than three times a week to work on that um hello everyone i'm late i'm sorry uh, uh you know what um it's fashion to be late uh okay thank you Hi, Susan and everybody. Very, very interesting uh, stuff. I hope it guys help you. Alma says, does the percentage can change? I took the assessment three times and the last one on my letter rise up a lot. Again, it has a lot to do if you're thinking emotionally or you're thinking, okay, let's gonna go move from this like. If you're thinking about work only, the, your percentage are going to be different. If you're thinking about personal life, your percentage are going to be different. You need to have the next, the, the same mindset. Uh, this is our, all the classes. This is the two hours and a half that you missed last night. And believe me, it was freaky. Uh, for everybody who is in, interested in personalities, uh, we're going to be talking about that the study done an IG Nobel Prize winner about eyebrows, uh, eyebrows and our narcissist, narcissism. This is where you can find that we have live two times a week. You go to humanbehavioral.com-webinar uh, every Wednesday and Friday, 4.05 p.m. If I don't take a nap, we are uh, uh, on time. And we have more questions. Uh, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Like hair? Well, hair, here we go. So when you take any assessment, you need to think that, okay, it's a balance between personal life and business life. So, and it's okay to have both. Again, my introversion is 98. Most people didn't guess that I will be 98 introversion. What is going to happen is I gonna, I have the Facebook group tonight. I have a dinner with a friend tonight. And after that, I'm going to disconnect my phone and I probably I'm going to disappear until Friday, until Monday. And what I'm going to do is I feed in my raccoons and I'm going to be working on my parsley and tomatoes on my backyard. That is introversion. That's how I'm going to be intake. Why? Because we have five, five, seven lives training and webinars this week. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot do it anymore. Why? I'm exhausted. Why? Because I'm exposed. And the reason I'm doing this with other people is because if I need to do it and see myself, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to freak out. That's how introvert I am. I need to recharge. So doesn't matter what are your letters. Doesn't matter if they change the percentage. The important is that you need to understand who you are. And it's super important that your team do the, the assessment together and they can understand together why because we grow better we go stronger when we go together and no alone and one of the reasons that every team that i'm part of and that we are part of is so good is because we understand our strength mm -hmm. and the parts we need a little help and when you find somebody who can help you and those, like everybody needed, mm -hmm. I'm a lazy ass. I spend nine, 19 hours on a chair. I need somebody who keep my ass. I wish Aaron, you was near so you get me to go for a run on the beach. Like I live, 
I, I moved one walk away from the beach. I haven't run on the freaking beach in two years. Why? Because I'm a lazy ass. I know I'm <laughs> not going to do it. So I need somebody who like, okay, Susan, we go for a run, even if I don't want to. That's what makes you better. When you know your strengths, when you know your place of improvement, and you pair with people who make you better. Elva, Erin, what do you think, guys? Yeah, I think the same. I think the same. It's like, well, here came to my mom to my mind a question. How often you have to do this assessment with your team? It's just that you did only just one time, or it's I don't know, it's like every six months or every year, something like that. I would do it once a year. Okay. Because uh, naturally we change personalities mm -hmm. every seven years. Our face mm -hmm. change every seven years. And for example, I have been reading people before the pandemic, during the pandemic mm -hmm. and now, and their faces, their myers break, and every, every assessment that you can do have changed so much. Because mm -hmm. what we're going through change the way we think. Mm -hmm. People who is extremely emotional become more emotional or less emotional because they block their emotions. So um, Shirley says, uh, start at at beginning. At, it was a lot of fun and great info. Sandra says, I haven't taken the test. It's Remember, Sandra, it's not a test. It's an assessment. And one of the reasons that I'm, uh, I'm strong in understanding this, because Test is determined that you're good or bad. An assessment is help you to understand who you are. And that's where is my or break, help you to improve. Uh, okay, I did block a real good friend or uh, he blocked me because I told him I can handle rape rude people. This is what kept me from doing live on any social media. You know what? Some people is doing really bad, Sandra. Uh, maybe you need to reach your friend and ask why he's, he or she is so rude. Maybe he's doing really bad. And the only way to do the catharsis is being a bitch or okay. with other people. Uh, we don't know what other people is going through. This year has been historical for anyone. People then, it was a sweetheart become devils this year. And then I need to get away from them because they were toxic when there were like really good friends before we don't know susan you don't look like a lazy ass you look like you are very active like oh no <laughs> you know what happened i spend i can spend seven to eight days looking for something and not moving forward so it's not that i'm lazy and hyperactive but I keep looking and looking and more and more and more and more and more. And one time I need somebody who says, stop. So don't confuse the, the P as a lazy people. They don't know how to stop. So they need someone who like, okay, done. Stop it. Move on. Uh, Sandra says, thank you. Erin, um, you are the guest. So your the, fun, the final words are yours. No, I really love this. I mean, I think it's really cool to learn about yourself. And I also feel like the fact that you could practically answer the questions on the assessment for me just is a true testament of, you know, like how close we are. And I think that's neat. And I think that's special. And we're so opposite, but we get along so well. And, you know, it, it just goes to show that we can all, you know, kind of get along in harmony, right? Mm hmm yeah, that's why the world is so amazing because there's all these different personality types out there. Because it's complementing each other mm -hmm. instead to concentrating, oh, we are not good for each other. What yeah. about if, okay, what we don't use both strength on the end of the road and we put it together to make something awesome? Most yeah. people is more concentrated on the bad things than the good things. And that's one of the things that what teams doesn't work together. And when you get hired by a company to know like what is going on, like, okay, let's start with, with the boss and yeah. let's go down. Like, no, the problem is the team, like if you have 30 people 
and you have been working in big corporate corp, uh, corporation area if you have 30 people and none of them is working and they have one boss who you need to look for first who, who do you need to look for first yeah the boss the boss yeah, yeah so really accountable. well thank you guys so much for having me i really appreciate it super fun so thank now you. you can put in your what 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 you don't need to put that in your profile anymore because you're no. not single anymore. But yeah. if you need to, now you can let people know that you are an extrovert, sensing, feeling, and judging. Yeah. Thank you. Now you understand all those letters that you have been reading for so yeah, many years. Yeah. Like, what the heck do they mean? Yeah. Thank you for uh, explaining. So, again, Erin, where people can find you? Oh, you can find me at You're Such a Catch on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my podcast is You're Such a Catch, and it's on all podcast players, too. So check it out. So people is keep sending. Uh, this make a lot of more sense now. Thank you for another great live. Thank you very much. The idea is to help you to navigate things that people talk, but they don't know about it. And that's the reason I put my license certification on um, MBTI as a company in the beginning. Uh, well said, Erin. Kudos for you. Samantha is all the way from England. From For her, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Thank you, lady. This was a fun evening. Alma says, you guys... Uh, uh, blew my mind as always i love you we love you too alma because, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah alma is part of the team but we didn't do her mbti because i know that she's really 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 shy if you think i'm introvert she's highly shy but she's amazing yeah. she get us uh together and if we have a live and we have a website is because she made it happen uh oh, yeah. i'm starting to apply this in daily life good do that and learn about it and read about it is great sarah i can unsee anything i have learned uh no uh, we always says we are addicted when you see it you see it um good info thank you thank you erica for being here um gardening girl thanks i'm definitely do that shirley thompson says and guys it's been one hour 41 minutes like that big lie that we says is going to be 30 and by the way in four minutes we have the facebook group so <laughs> my introversion i don't know i think i'm gonna call my friend says can we do lunch instead dinner because i don't think i can <laughs> good night lady thank you very much thank you very much to you erin uh barbie i miss you to death i love you I okay love you. don't don't tell anyone I nobody's gonna that. believe it <laughs> and it's nice to meet you and get to talk with you live or via virtual whatever. But I see you all the time, so it's nice to actually like, be on the live with you. So. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yes. Elva, thank you, like always, for being my business partner in crime. Uh, to all of you to be here, thank you. Uh, we try to make your Fridays uh, better. Uh, sorry if uh, we still having problems with Facebook. We're trying to, like, the, we received an email this morning that Facebook changed again. Like, oh, God, give us a break. Uh, John Pactos, and thank you all. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, too. Are we going to have the best weather in, like, months? Yay. Goodbye, <laughs> everyone. Yeah. Finally, we over the 40s in Chicago. Go wow. and enjoy the beach. <laughs> Bye. I have two minutes to pee and go back to the Facebook group. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.